All right, so now we're gonna take a look at my new track, Hand Grenade, with uh, MC Kappa on it. It's a pretty heavy track with metal influences, big basses. Uh, Kappa is putting on his most heaviest voice as well. The metal influences are kind of like Limp Bizkit, Korn, that kind of, that corner. Let's dive into it. All right, so let's start with uh, whatever is on top in the project, and that those seems to be the drums. So uh, the first channel is a battery with a crash sample in there. So it's well, uh, as I explained in the other track, it's a cymbal soup uh, crash. So just to fill up the highs a bit, you know, give that tickle in your ear, the pressure. It's an element that you don't notice when it's there, but you do notice it when it's gone, and I'll show you. So. See? Now it's back. It's on. Off. It's on. So you, yeah, I, don't know. I just, I just like how it kind of fills up that ho uh, the high end. Just gives, gives the whole thing a bit more energy, a bit more, yeah, pressure on the high and just, yeah, as I said, the tickle inside your ear. I, I, I really like that. I really like that to hear that in a tune, and I really like to feel that. So I try to put it in all my music as well. Uh, the the channel after that is shaker, you know, just just to uh, get the 16 bar a bit more energy when it comes in, so it's a bit more speed. Uh, channel after that is also well, oh, oh that is not really a shaker, it's an offbeat hi hat. Just doing the same thing, just adding in another element like halfway through the 16 bar, just to make sure that something new comes in, you know, that, that gives it a bit more energy and just change it up. Just a just a very small bit, but that can make a huge difference. Even if it's like a small element like this, like like the shaker or this upbeat hi hat, it just I don't know. It works. It really works. All right. So next up is uh, addictive drums. Uh, it's frozen as you can see because the whole project is pretty heavy already. So I try to you know free up some space by freezing the more like uh, resource intense uh, tracks. Like well, addictive drums is quite heavy on the RAM, I think, and on processing power sometimes as well. But yeah, again, I mean, I can freeze it, but it's not that spectacular what's going on. I think it's like one of the metal kits, and I've processed that a bit. It works. I did put on OTT like a barbarian, but yeah, I know, it, it drives it up. Also, just on a side note, this is a pretty old project. So it's like two years ago or more that I wrote this. So uh, recently I went back into this to do like the whole mix down again. And then I was like, oh. Okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it like this again uh, these days because I don't know. You, the, if you grow as a producer, you also, you know, you start making choices differently. And I made some choices <laughs> in creating this that I wouldn't do these days. But like putting an OTT in my on the hi hat, but it works. So why not? That's that. That is the bottom line, though. Like if it works, it works, and it doesn't matter really how ugly the solution is. And uh, next up are the toms, I think also from Addictive Drums. Yeah. Yeah, and no OTT on this, I just uh, filtered it. Okay, next up is the kick, which comes from kick two. Right, yeah, cool. So I really like this plugin because it gives you such absolute control over kick that you can, you always sound great. Uh, I don't really use uh, kick, kick samples these days because I got this. I can make every kick I want and make it sound exactly like I want with this. And I mean, you can select, you can put in the length in or the even the points of the the pitch and add some clicks on there. And I mean, so many clicks in this one as well. And that that can also really shape the sound of your kick. Yeah, and um, it's pretty easy to, you know, like, uh, right, so ooh, uh, maybe it needs to be like one. Right? You can just pitch it up here. Mm. That's great. I really recommend this if you if you just want to have great sounding kicks these days. All right, and then the snare. That's a bit of a weird one, if I remember correctly. This battery. And then, um, let's see. Ah, yeah, snare buddy. Just one of those snare bodies I've made. And then the transition is coming from kick two again. It's kind of a, 
weird transient. I wouldn't also would not make transient like this these days anymore. So I mean, look how this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So like the actual the the fundamental part is n is pretty low compared to the rest, but it got like a lot of high end, a lot of mid content, which in my more uh, recent snare transients I would would have just this peak and then the rest a bit less. Also, all, all coming from uh, from kick two. I actually tried using my newer tra snare transient in this project, and f for some re weird reason, this worked better. Might be because I kind of already, you know, made lots of the mix on the whole track sounding around, you know, with this snare. So if you try to change that up this late in the process, sometimes this will just work better. But yeah, I don't know. This works. The snare like this it does sound a bit, bit digital, but. In the mix itself, it sounds great. Punches through, really, really punches through. But that's, that's I think, one of the most important elements of, of a snare, right? That it just punches through the mix. Uh, next up, we got more crashes. And then, probably one of my most used drum samples ever, this ride. I think this ride was in the, also in the remix I did for Telekinesis, the Fight Club one, and the intro, the ding, ding. Ding, ding, and actually in a lot of other tracks as well. It just I don't know. I really like this how this right, this this bell, the bell cup of this right sound, and I, it just punches through mixes as well. You can I just you know, the same as with the, um, with the shakers and with the the offbeat hi hat. I used the the right for the same purpose to just add an, another element that gives it a bit more drive, a bit more energy. Mm. And. Um, yeah, it just fills it up nicely. So I always try to keep in mind that if you have like a 16 bars and uh, you know, if you did even these like small variations in the drums can make a, such a huge, huge difference if you put that on it. At least for me, it really works if I if I do it like this and then I was like, oh, yeah, and then like, all right. So as for example, in that tune, a chord I did with Joe Miller, like halfway through the 16 bar, I, I laid a clap underneath each snare. So there you'd have like, and then, bats, bats, just like has a one clap every two snares, just like a clap with a big reverb and that. That really kind of pulls your attention because you're, you're getting used to the track. Like, all right, this sounding, and then something like that happens, and that grabs your attention back to the track. And that's things like this. This can do that, or like a a bleep, or something. You know, just something that just pulls your attention back to the track, just as you're getting settled in. And that makes the track so much more exciting to listen to. That's what I. Uh, yeah, that's really one of the best lessons that someone ever told me. And yeah, and I, and I always try to do that in my music. All right, so let's move on to the mids or the bass or what you would call it. I use it, I call it mids in this project. Um, the first thing here is the reese, the, well, the build reese, which I use for the build. But uh, it's also actually the reese I use for the main bass as well, but I um, resampled that into contact. Uh, so I'm gonna show it to you. It's with FM8. And of course. Clear what I'm doing as well. Uh, yeah, I'll show you the patch. It's actually the same reason as I as I used in my track Haymaker from my album. And apparently I was lazy and thought, oh, let's use this reese again. But then again, it's a pretty cool reese, so why not? Um, yeah, it's made in FM8, as you can see. It, yeah, I'll explain the patch. So there are two operators here, operator A and operator C, which are both sawtooth uh, waveforms, one with ratio to two, so that's one octave above the bass. Uh, this is the bass octave, and then this is the octave above. And then, as, as with a reese bass, you know, it's detuned sawway, so... <laughs> uh, to kind of doing that trick again, but slightly different. Uh, there's operator B here, which is a soft square, and the ratio is slightly above, so it's going a bit faster than normally, and yeah, so it's detuned. And that's sending feedback to operator A and operator C. So I'll show you how that sounds, uh, just by sending those to the output. So that's how that would sound, and then with operator B, sending the feedback in there. 
You ready to get that breezy feel? So. But um, I'm sending them into uh, operator E and F, which are two uh, saw tools as well. And that just sounds, it just uh, it adds more harmonic, it adds more low. Uh, and it just sounds cool because those get feedback and then, and then yeah. I'm not, I'm not the world's biggest FM expert, but the, I just just mainly created these kind of bases by just you know messing around with it and see oh well this will work in like that kind of, in like normal synthesis. But let's see if it will work out in this, and it kind of did. And then you know I tried some other things like oh might might be better maybe this will work. And that's so this whole respace was kind of an experiment for me using a different kind of synthesis. But I kind of ended ended up using it as <laughs> as like a as a normal synthesizer. So yeah, so you got so you those go in here, and then there's this uh, operator D, which is a ratio four, which uh, says two octaves of both because three a ratio of three is I think the second or third harmonic, which is uh, I think seventh. Yeah, because the, the 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 first harmonic is an octave. The, the second harmonic, or the, yeah, har second harmonic is a seventh, but I guess seven seven notes, and then the four, third harmonic is again is an octave again. So, right. So watch what happens when I activate that. It adds a bit more more harmonics and stuff to the sound that it did have before. So it gets even cooler than it was, and that's always better, right? More cool is more better. And then it goes into operator X, which is a, a noise a noise oscillator and also a saturator, which 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 I opened up completely just to make the sound a bit more gnarlier. And then the effects section is an overdrive here, a shelving EQ with just some added highs, a phaser, which you yeah you don't really hear it, but when I was creating the page, you would because there wasn't like a whole wall of plugins on it yet, and a reverb, which just make, gives it a bit more space. Then on the master, there's free voices. Well, the polyphony is on mono, obviously, because you want to have that for the Mendo legato feeling that's on. And then slight detuning to get that more like, yeah, the Reese detuning feel even more. And that's the whole synth. Then on the channel is a FET filter too, just for some uh, volume, some uh, uh, low cut automation as it's doing here where it's coming out of the filter during the intro. That's always nice, you know, to, to, let, to let it fall in so, so the reach doesn't just appear out of nowhere, but it just gets filtered in and then, you know, the whole, the whole thing would transition a bit smoother. Uh, then there's I Stop Trash, which is the distortion. Oh, yeah. This gives it that extra I try a layer of filth using a drive on both. Actually, I prefer using the drive types uh, in uh, in trash over the distortion types because I don't know they just sound a bit cleaner and but still have that that give give it enough balls to destroy the sound enough. And then there's another fat filter with some slight EQing, extra highs, bit take off a bit of the lows, resonating phase at ten again. Because why not? I think this gets better with phaser 10. Then there's the fluid, which is a chorus. I think don't think this plugin is made. I think they like um, they merged it with some other uh, some other some other plugins now. The audio damage guys was in like some like multi pro, multi effects processing plugin. But I know I still use the <laughs> the old just just when it was just uh, fluid. I use this actually uh, to uh, to create some extra uh, epicness to the respace. I don't think I use it in this project, but it was just on the track preset, which I saved the whole reason. So when you when you're playing it low, like and then go up, so th like that's cool, you know that that has energy. But when you open up the chorus, when the notes go up, you give it that kind of extra energy boost. So let's put out, and that's with it. So when you do that, when it when normally it would go up like, all right, cool, it goes up, that's nice. But when you uh, throw open the chorus as well, you know, make it even wider and bigger, it really, the whole bass comes towards the front and really opens up, if you know what I mean. It's like, wah, it just 
So if you do that, like boom, 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 woof, 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 woof. that's kind of how you can like play with those kind of stereo imaging things to also affect the mood and the you know the whole atmosphere of a track. It's nice. Uh, yeah, then it's another flanger. This is a stock one from Cubase. I, it sounds actually pretty good. I kind of miss this uh, when I moved to Cubase. Uh, moved to moved to Bitwig. I'm sorry. And then there's the glue. The glue just a compressor. Is kind of using the makeup gain, B clip in, just you know, uh, filter. The old Fab Filter Pro L. I even forgot how to turn on the. The visual feedback display, if that had it, I wow, well, I haven't used this for ages. This used to have like a visual feedback thing, I guess, but I don't know. I haven't used this for a very, very long time. That that's how old this project is, apparently. Or how old this preset is, like this this like track preset that I made. Since it's from my album, that's two thousand that came in two thousand eighteen, so two so I think I created this Reese. 2007, 2017, yeah. Yeah, this release is from 2017, so that's pretty old already. It's four years old, and then this, I think I started this track in 2019, I guess, like early 2019. So I, I probably just needed a, a release space real quick, and then I made this, or even earlier, early 2019, maybe end of 2018. So that that's where I started this track. It actually started out as for for another project I was working on with with this with this, with this other MCs, but they they wanted something more hip hop -y, So and I was like, well, this is not hip hop -y enough for you. Too bad. I just asked someone else for it, and then ended up with Kappa, and that worked out great. All right, and then there's a compressor for some, for some side chaining. For that because of the build up and then the side widener to give it some more stereo. It's so good for stereo because it really keeps the mono signal intact as well. So, you know, when you would use uh, st stereo plugins, sometimes you know you wouldn't have any mono signal left, but this also keeps a mono signal there. Th that's why I really like this plugin for, for stereo imaging. All right, so next up is the Serum Trigger. Going to a non-existent trigger <laughs> and another trigger also going to a non-existing plugin. Then is the then is the multi-pass uh, re. Sorry, I didn't sleep very well last night. <laughs> uh, yeah, then is the multi-pass re MIDI trigger because it's a MIDI channel. Uh, yeah, because on the main the base the main base channel there is a there's a multi-pass. Uh, I use it in the same way as I use the, um, as I showed you in the Bitwig uh, track, in the masterclass thing. Uh, just you know to create some extra variations on the bass, and then you can see it go open up here. This is doing eight bars without it, just eight bars straight, and then the phase of ten coming in. And then later on, it's, it gets the movement from the multi pass, and that gets triggered with the MIDI trigger, which kind of, which the and the MIDI trigger triggers the starting point of the elevo. So instead of you know like inside multi pass, you, you mean you can also change the starting point with the phase button here. But if you MIDI trigger it, sometimes you, it's it's a faster way than having to write in in automation for the phase button. Like all right, and then sometimes it wouldn't be right, and especially since it is synced uh, using a MIDI. A MIDI trigger for it, and you can just move it real fast. Like, all right, I just want to move the MIDI trigger slightly to the left, so it triggers earlier, and then you can change the whole timing and the feel of the LFO. And, uh, I think it works very nice. Uh, now we're moving on to the main bass, which is well, it is the FM reach, but I decided to uh, resample it into Contact because originally I think I was planning and because uh, I made a duplicate and then processed that differently. So and when you. Uh, and then when you open this up, it will start phasing, you know, you can add some extra harmonics, you know. But I I think I intended to use that, but then I ended up not using it. But that's why it is in contact. <laughs> I don't think I'm really, yeah, I, I tried using that. That leather notch thing can actually be pretty cool if you, if you put some, 
that I can add a ball on that and then start moving that, but I didn't do that in this track. And for the rest, I think this event patch is not doing a lot. Or the, the contact patch is not doing a lot. Um, yeah, there's a felt filter going on there with like a lot of small and I dare to say, dare say, unnecessary edits like these. But yeah, the, this one is pretty important. Obviously, this one, this one rolling off the lows a bit and then this one boosting the highs by, was it three decibels? Because yeah, it's just kind of nonsense. That some, yeah, that's better. Probably I tried making a big. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, there I see. And that's why I jumped to the 30 decibel display, but you don't really need the 30 decibel display instead, unless you're really making big peaks. So this gives a better loop. So yeah, there's a lot of mids added, some highs, some, some, uh, yeah, some mids subtracted. Yeah. As I as I said uh, earlier, <laughs> I kind of. Yeah, I wrote this track a long time ago, so some of the stuff I did there is a mystery to me. Like, I would not do it again. Uh, there's a compressor, but I don't think... Yeah, because I, later on, uh, when I started mixing the tune, I switched from using uh, sidechaining on the channels to just group sidechaining it. Uh, phaser 10, again, uh, Pro and B, but that's just... Uh, that's just compressing the highs a bit. Uh, Kilo Ritz game for some volume automation. Yeah, I use this a lot for volume automation, but um, I don't know. Uh, you can also do it with Camel Fat, but that ditters it a bit. But but Camel Fat does have a, a zero to hundred volume knob instead of and the kilohertz gain. Well, it's it's a gain knob, so you can use volume automation with it as long as you're going down. But it will sound differently than yeah. So with the ca Camel Fat at the zero to hundred knob, which is a bit more definite if you can completely choke off. Uh, Choke off a track, and then you don't have to touch the fader, which the channel fader, because I I try to not use those because I want to use those for things like for mixing, you know, like oh I want to have the channel a bit softer, I want to have the channel a bit harder uh, in the mix, and then when you have automation on that going, that's going to be disaster mixing because then you have to mix with the automation, and you don't want that. So I always use a separate plugin for volume volume automation. Yeah, and then another fat filter, which is, yeah, this, I think this has some, for this gets like automated, like goes on and off, rolls off the lows because we got a separate sub and rolls off the highs a bit because those were getting a bit too, a bit too much. And then next up, well, it's the sub. It's pretty simple. It's just from Serum. Uh, yeah, sign with some extra harmonics added in. It's, it's better, it's always better. I think I prefer to have some extra harmonics in my sub because just like the low sinus, it's like that one octave. It sounds cool, but you just sub will get a bit fuller sound if you start adding in some extra harmonics so the sub will get a bit, yeah, a bit bigger, a bit fuller, a bit warmer as well. And then there's a third channel called Boat because I think I tried to get more bit of like that thing that when, when this was coming up all those foghorns were just starting as well I was like oh okay this sounds pretty big and then I was and I was listening to the track I was like ah, maybe if this bass can have a bit more of the biggie feel that those foghorns but not too much but I think like that Benny L track which is was a breakthrough track the brown the one on metalhead I think I tried to recreate like the bigness of that track by because this is in contact. Yeah, I can. I cannot hear with him. Yes. Yeah, I think I just tried to remake one of those, uh, maybe even a Reese bass in Serum, and then I rendered that out just in with a lot of reverb. Oh yeah, that's a... So yeah, and then I used it, and then I used this as a channel just to add, add some extra harmonics, some extra weight, some extra stereo to the already existing bass. So when you, yeah, and there's apparently nothing on the channel doing anything. Okay, if that's my choice back then. And then all these these three elements, the the, the original uh, contact, the sub, and this go into this bus. 
set that folder here probably yeah with some for some uh automation the multi pass which i just showed you you know if it's just uh the lfo going to the gain there is a oh and there's also a high pass filter for even more dramatic Yeah, it makes the more the, the whole the whole pumping effect a bit more dramatic. And phaser ten again because why not have oh yeah this is the automated phaser ten of course. Uh, this this is like a phaser ten that just comes in. There's nothing. In this. So uh, as as the track goes on, the 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 re-space slowly changes. So, you know, so you can uh, and then just dial it in. So, the, so, so it never every hit just sounds like slightly different. Because, and here, here we get really nasty because the the phaser just really start messing up with the with the sound. But I like it though. It's like a good. It's a good way to again keep it interesting by just keep on keep on modulating the bass. Uh, Pro C two for for side chaining. Cause, and then a Pro Q three. Or, yeah, rolling off the highs, as I said. And the other thing as well that is pretty important to give the give the highs a bit more space. And I thought like so adding back, adding some of the mids back in was, was a good idea. Sometimes it works. You take them out and you add them in, and you get sort of different sounding mids when you cut stuff and then boost whatever's left. And the base then also comes up there. And then that comes together in this channel called Respace with a Jesus Christ. Okay. And I use an OTT on there. Because yeah, as I said, a few years ago I was still bad bearing. But sometimes actually I mean it's fun to hate on the OTT, but then again it does what it what it's designed to do pretty damn good. It, it yeah, it does what it's designed to do pretty damn good, and that's just compressing something in like into the next solar system and that's what it does, and it's pretty nice. Uh, after that is the glue, just pushing it up a bit. Uh, Pro C2 for more side chaining. Yep. Uh, Guitar Hearts game for volume automation. Just rolling off the lows just just a bit, and then a Pro MB just rolling off the highs, compressing the highs a bit because I wasn't doing that enough. And there's a, a, a channel. Sneaky, sneaky extra mids channel just creating some noise. Just slightly, yeah, it's got the mech distortion on there, and then. But you don't, I, I, I can't, I don't think you really he, might not really hear this in the final mix because it's. <laughs> yeah, you might not really hear this, but. Maybe you do. Anyway, when I made this, I decided, you know what this needs? More mates. <laughs> Does it work? All right. So next up is this. Yeah, it's the same reasons there, but then with some extra uh, modulation in it, the, like the Enigma, which is a flang flanger, flanger, flanger. Uh, it's actually. As the Black Snap Empire guys told me that uh, Cause for Concern used to use this a lot to to create their their kind of uh, reach based sound. They was called the Cause for Concern machine. So <laughs> it's cool though. It's it's a nice flanger. It got a pretty cool sound and I Yeah, it just makes it it just fucks it up a bit more. And then There's a multi pass, and which opens up, opens up sometimes. You know, they got some modulation on there. I just use this, you know, like an octave higher and then going down to so some like in between fill up bases. It basically got almost the same uh, modulation as the build reads with some extra stuff like that Enigma in there and another phaser 10 because I just put two phaser 10s on there. Anyway, it works, and that, that's kind of the baseline, really. Just 
even if it's so weird or like like oh, what the hell are you doing that's amateur stuff sometimes doing some just putting two uh, uh, plugins of the same type after each other on the same channel sometimes it works and uh, and in the end that's what matter if it works if it just sounds good that way the fuck it it's just good like that really just do whatever you want man and then lastly there is this and i yeah i think yeah oh yeah yeah there used to be a serum but then i bounced that uh because i wanted to modulate it i guess but which i end up ended up not doing and also bounced it because of well, my computer but my old computer was just not agreeing with this project anymore the new one is well is this almost the same computer with, with just some edit i i changed some hardware but it it has a lot better t uh, a much better time handling all these projects now uh anyway what i tried doing here this is kind of interesting uh i i layered it with the guitars like so this a and then the and then the and the mid bass is doing the same thing so you get like gigging which is like a lot of metal bands love to do like doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. And then yeah, I do the same thing with the guitars, and also supported by the mid bass. So you kind of, so if I would just do this with the guitars, it wouldn't sound cool, and it would kind of sound weird because the guitars have such a distinctive sound, and synth bass has got such a di distinctive sound. But when you layer them together like this, if you just look up what what um, the sound qualities of both are, and then you just uh, so you got the guitars, and then I just I know tried to make a, a synth a synth bass that kind of fitted that idea but also would have enough uh harmonic content and uh, it has kind of like same in the sound as like the mi as the as the rest of the bases and if you go somewhere in between there sometimes and then layering it it would really work i did the same thing with my track whiplash like where the whole main bass is a serum instance but then there's a, a, a electric guitar underneath as well which really fills it up. So when I would disable the electric guitar in that track, you, the, like the the drop would lose a lot of its energy because the electric guitar still filled up a lot and gave a lot of energy as well. And where the mid bass was more like the clean and like, and then the guitar electric guitar would be more like the noise, kind of like this cradle of noise of of like sound surrounding the mid bass, and that worked really well together. And that's kind of, and that's the same thing happening here. Because if I because it still has this guitar as as a guitar feel, and you still hear really hear the guitar, but just the mid bass really like augments it, like and give it enough points. Because I would just even if I would have like the uh, the sub underneath there, it wasn't going to be a thick enough, uh, not going to be uh, yeah harsh enough to actually uh, work together with the rest of the mid basses. So yeah, that's that. That was the mid bass section. Then we're getting at the synth section, which is pretty limited in this track. <laughs> it's two two synths. Uh, one is the Diva Alarmy thing, which comes in during the intro as well. Got a Fab filter on there, just cutting off all the lows because it doesn't need that. Got a Sonex's grind box on it, just make it a bit more dirty. It's it's quite nice though. So, uh, you should put it on like grime mode. It gets more into like the more into like the bit crusher territory. Yeah, but you don't really hear it on this sound, but it does change it a bit. Then there's a killer is game for volume automation again, uh, for Hala vintage verb for some reverb, and then another pro cue free for some extra EQing like low cutting of lows, cutting of the highs because well it's, it's a large sound. And I think the sound was this hydraulics thing, but I think I messed with the with this preset a bit. It's a great synth, by the way, uh, Diva. It's really versatile. I use it a lot for pads and, and trans leads and those kind of, that kind of stuff. Also, when I uh, when for house music and stuff, it's really great because you get, you can get that like warm bass warm old school synth feeling out of it even when you're making like basses for house or techno or stuff pretty pretty great synth because it got all the different uh because you can change it you can change the the vcos the oscillators here and then have different filter types like this this is more modeled after the moog ones or after 
there's more like the Juno uh, filter, etc., etc. All right, and then the second synth is this nasty ass screech, which is which comes in after 16 bars. It's just it's just another one of those things which I mentioned in the drums as well. You know, like with uh, um, you know adding in elements like small background elements that just raise the energy up, and that's what this screech thing does as well. It's just like something that it means heavily sidechained as well, so it just pumps and just. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a big aggressive sound. Uh, yeah, so here's the Pro C2 doing the pumping. And here's a, well, obviously rolling off a lot of the, lot of the lows because he doesn't really need that. And then volume automation, and then the sound itself is massive. And I think, yeah, I got this from one of those hardstyle uh, screech preset packs, and I just messed a bit with it because they were like. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, it's just easy, you know, to just sometimes throw in one of those presets when you're just working and trying to get a vibe down and like, all right, and not spend like a thousand hours on into making all these kind of sounds. You don't need to make everything yourself sometimes, especially sometimes you just have to make a, a choice between between workflow and between having some weird sense of honor of having to make every single sound yourself. You don't need to. You really don't need to.